Hey guys, welcome to another video. This is gonna be a tutorial type thing showing you the process I take to uh, edit this image you see here. So this is an image I took at Botley Grange this week. Uh, you will have seen hopefully the video of my trip down there. I've done a blog type video. If you haven't seen that video, please have a look later. If you haven't seen that video, please take a look at it later. It uh, is quite fun. It will show you me running around these rooms doing various things. Uh, you'll notice that I get a little anal about certain things in these hotel rooms when I do interior design photography. Uh, things like the bed looks really wrinkled. Uh, something I like to take out in my photos. You'll see I'll do this. Uh, so my process here will be in Lightroom initially. We'll go through the basic uh, changes then we'll get into some other bits and pieces and then we'll scoot on over to Photoshop we'll iron out this bed cover here and I'll show you how to do that quite simply uh, we'll have a look around the room see if there's anything we want to take out things like the plug in the background there might be a little bit distracting we might crop in to get rid of this bit down the bottom here uh, I'm not too sure that might have to stay there because we want to get the bed in as much as possible there might be other things like bits and pieces that were on the lens like you see just here uh, we're going to want to take that out as well uh, we might do simple things like that here in, in Lightroom we've got a pretty decent tool spot removal tool here so yeah let's uh, let's get into this so the first thing I'm going to do is come down to my basics palette if you don't see it open just click it like that it will come open and here uh, we're going to select an area that we want to come out to be white like that now let me just let you tell you what these red areas are here if you come up to the histogram open up the histogram you've got these little things in the corners I like to have these turned on sometime if you turn it off that will go there what it's showing me is areas that are clipped they're areas that are, are white than white it means there's no detail in that area at all we're going to sort that out in a second I've also got this one clipped doesn't show anything because what that would show is if there's any areas that are clipped black or too black or have no detail because they're, they're too dark uh, they would show up blue so if for instance I turned this right down you'll see this area down here there's some blue bits down there uh, that's what that's gonna do so we're gonna leave them on for the time being I like to see areas that are clipped so here we go we're gonna come back to our basics palette and it's given us a really really good flat image from the white balance which is what we want to start with that's fine I'm gonna add just a teeny bit maybe go on the blue side and add a tint there okay so what I'm trying to do is keep the white in the in the sheets uh, but I want to make sure that I get a nice nice color so that's what we're gonna go for there here we're gonna bring the shadows up just about there, I'm not gonna go too far. If you watch any of my landscape videos, you'll notice sometimes I'll bring the shadows right up like that. I'm not gonna do that here, I'm just gonna go to about there. Highlights we're gonna bring down, and you're gonna see those red spots start to disappear. They're not gonna disappear completely, or maybe they will. There we go, those lights were quite bright in there. But I'm gonna bring the exposure of the whole image down just slightly, so we're gonna lose all those red parts that are gonna go. If I do that, you'll see there's no red parts in there at all, that's brilliant. Wipes I'm going to bring back up slightly, but only ever so slightly because I don't want to bring those red parts back in. And the blacks we're going to bring down. Now you see it's going to start going blue there. We don't want to go that far, so we are going to come to about, about there. You can hold down Alt as well, the Alt key, and use that. It helps you a bit better. Let me go to about there. I'm not too worried because, to be fair, I'm probably going to crop that side of the image slightly. I might want to get rid of that. And this light up here doesn't do anything for the image. I'm probably going to crop, crop in slightly. Yeah, so let's uh, add a little bit of clarity. Vibrance, we're going to shoot straight up a bit to about there. That's quite nice. What I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to get rid of this blue coming in from underneath the curtains. A little bit of saturation. The reason why the curtains are closed, you can see it's daytime. The reason why the curtains are closed is because I don't really like to shoot midday. I prefer to shoot when it's darker, 
so I don't have to have the curtains closed or if I do have the curtains closed you won't get such a bright light coming through like this unfortunately I was a bit constrained on the day I didn't have the time to wait around to the evening it's obviously a hotel it's a working hotel these rooms were booked out you're not always going to have the luxury of of time so you, you have to compensate and, and work around that and this is what I've done uh, if I left those windows open I'd probably have to bracket an exposure uh, to dial down and show what's outside however outside these windows wasn't particularly nice uh, it is a nice building but they have like a tre like a like a concrete trellis type thing outside and it wouldn't have looked very nice in fact outside this window it's just another wall not very pretty at all uh, so wouldn't have been nice so I've got to close the curtains so okay so let's crop this image for now I'm gonna crop and make sure that's locked because I want to keep the ratio and I'm just gonna come down there now I don't want to I don't want to keep too much of the ceiling actually I want to keep more of the bed in so I'm actually going to come in to about there I like this sofa this sofa is quite nice uh, so now we are at a point where we can now carry on I want to come into the point curve I'm going to add a medium contrast there which means if I come back up to here I can increase or decrease the, the global contrast some more I like it just to be quite punchy that's quite nice and exposure I'm just going to bring up again ever so slightly in fact the shadows I'm going to bring up a little bit more you see a bit more detail down here okay now like I said I want to get rid of some of the blue so if we come to saturation palette we're going to move the blues down a bit and you can see just under the window there those blues are just starting to disappear ever so slightly I don't want to do too much of the purples because I like the magenta in the picture and this being purple here I don't want to lose saturation in that luminance I'm going to push the blues up a little bit more and you see again it just go it just starting to go that's fine the biggest problem you have have here is because there is quite a bit of blue in the ceiling and where the lights are we're now starting to get clipping again that's fine we can just come back up and we're going to bring the exposure down to there we're going to push the shadows a bit further and that's okay don't mind that too much okay sharpening i always sharpen my images i'm going to sharpen to about 70. i'm going to hold down out and i add a mask to that I can see what that mask doing. It means that anywhere that's white, which is the edges, and anything that's got texture will be sharpened. The wall, like at the back here, won't be sharpened at all because it's completely black. So that's what we want. We have this little bit of dust, a bit of sense of dust up there. So we're just going to pop. That should do that. Have a quick look around, see if there's any other bits of sense of dust anywhere. Uh, we seem to be okay there. Right, I'm going to go right down the bottom. We're going to remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction to find the lens I was using, which was a come on. It was a 10 to 24. Okay, and let's have a look at the level. Let's, let's see if we can get anything different. I don't think that's bad too much. My auto. Actually, auto was better, I think. The bed's slightly straighter. Okay, and we've got a nice, nice lines through there. The TV and everything looks okay. Okay. Let's bring the whites down a bit. Okay, so we'll bring the whites down quite a bit. That's fine. I don't mind that doesn't look too bad okay now a little bit of vignette just a touch and for our global adjustments that's pretty much it yeah I'm happy with that okay so now 
we're going to do some of my radial filter adjustments if you haven't seen me do this before I learned this technique from a uh, French photographer his name is Serge Ramley he does this to his interior design photography to add a bit of uh, interest in the lighting obviously it's a very flat image uh, this when I do this and you're gonna watch me do it now is gonna look fake uh, it's always gonna look fake in fact let me just find I've got a bit of a what's this red mark on the wall let's just take that out Okay, that's better. I just know. I just notice these things and when I see them. I see them. It bugs me. So we're going to come to the, the radial filter, and I'm going to do a few bits and pieces here. You may not like this, guys. It's something I do. I like it. Adds interest to my pictures. Uh, in fact, it's different, and you may not like it. But go away from the image. Come back and look at it without seeing me having done it and honestly you will see that it, it adds so much depth to the lighting in, the, in, in this bedroom and in fact in any room uh, I've done this to many 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 pictures and people don't realize I've done it they never see it so it's something that having not seen it being done it it's just it just it's just good it just really really helps and I'm just adding little bits of interest here and there. So it's a bit too bright. If it's too bright, just bring it back down. And I'm going to add one on the wall at the back here. Bring that down. I'll show you before and after in a second. You'll, you'll see what I mean. It's just it's a, it's a really, really good technique of adding lighting interest to any, any room, really. It doesn't have to be a bedroom. It can be any room. I've done this in in halls. I've done this in in many many different places, and it just looks. People have asked me how what what is different is that you know they, they look at my images versus someone else's image of the same room after I've done this, and they're just amazed and don't realise and have no idea. But it's a simple technique. It just adds something, and and pe without people re even realising what it is. In a second, I'll, I'll show you a few other pictures I've done for this uh, for this hotel. I'll show you I'll show you what I've done and see what you think. As I say, guys, this is, this is my process. You may not like it. I don't expect everyone to like it. It's different. I know it's different, and you know people are afraid of different things. It's it's just something I do. And I, I like doing it, and bring that a bit bigger. Because you don't really need one on the side of the bed there, but hey, I'm needing it. So maybe this is good. I'm gonna add this one to there. Okay, have a look, and I'll show you the before and after this. And you're probably going to hate it. When I first started doing this, it looks so strange. But trust me, if you're looking to get into interior design photography and you want to sell your images, these images will always look better than someone else's image that's flat, has no light in differentiation in, in the picture it looks weird like this but leave it on go away pause this video now come back and just look at the image as it is now and honestly it's it, it is what it is I'm gonna add another one down here actually Okay, and as it stands, this image is good to go into Photoshop. So I'm going to push this through to Photoshop and I'll see you there in a second. Okay, guys, we're in Photoshop. First thing I'm going to do is create a new layer. That's Command J. 
or you can drag this down to here and that will add a new layer as well on the top layer first thing I'm going to do is go around the entire image and look for things that may need to be either cropped out or cloned out not too sure about the feet down here it's not too bugging but let's just take this here say about this on the wall here now with this one what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little selection around it I'm going to grab my patch tool loving this at the moment this is working really well because it takes the textures but leaves the color it's brilliant so if you want to move it I could have moved it to over there and watch it will bring everything over and it doesn't bring the color but you do get a little bit here and there but we're easily done let's just go in fact often what can do is just go back one to the command Z there we go and put that we'll see if we get any lines like there's a little bit there just pull that one way pull that the other way you know it's really really easy I love the patch tool at the moment I'm gonna just sort out a few of these bits and pieces using various tools I'm gonna use up to 100% for some reason I didn't have it on 100% ok let's use the spot tool so the various tools and they all do the same thing to be fair it's just what you're comfortable with and what you like to work with I like to work fast so here we literally have everything done in a couple of seconds using the uh, human brush tool or human spot tool so right then so we've got to the point where we're happy with everything there's nothing else that needs to be cloned out or spot human tool whatever out uh, da -da 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 -da. Right, everything looks to be about okay normally I'm looking for leads around the back of the TV actually if you watch my video you'll see that the leads were coming down from the TV going to plug behind these curtains here like it was making the curtains do a funny shape so I took the leads out and placed them behind the TV nice and neatly uh, so we don't have to do anything with that in fact those leads that are just trailing down there let's have a look can we do with it it's probably not necessary to be fair but it's going to look worse than what it is yeah we do in fact we're going to just leave that as it was I'm not too worried about that but all the leads for the TV are behind there and I managed to hide them well with the angle of the camera so again it's getting everything right in camera first if you can in my other video you'll see I'm running around the bed uh, about five or six times to, to get this to get the, uh, the the bed sheets under the bed right get everything looking good because the with interior design and especially for hotels and hotel rooms I'm trying to sell these images uh, because hotels want to use these images on their website on things like booking.com they're not going to use the images if they don't look right now the first thing you find when you're looking for a hotel room is what does the bedroom look like what does the bed look like in particular the bed so if we can get the bed looking good in these images these images are going to sell for the hotels and the hotels are going to sell the hotel room as an image if you like so what we're going to do now is I'm just going to flatten this image control shift E will make a flattened copy and I'm just going to copy this again you don't have to do that it's my process again this might not be the way other people work but this is the way I work I like to flatten my images and then make another layer I always want to make a layer to start a new part of a process uh, I don't want to just do everything on one layer because uh, if you make a mistake you generally can't go back now I can use the history tool to go back and do anything I need to do but for the time being here's a new layer I'm going to come up to filter I'm going to go to blur I'm going to go to Gaussman blur and I'm going to whack this up because we were quite close it's quite a big image quite close to the bed to the point where those wrinkles disappear which is about there minus 26 and that's quite hard that's about 20 
about there. And then I'm going to hold out and hit the mask button just there, the layer mask. So what it's going to do is add the layer mask, but the layer mask is currently invisible. So we're now going to choose B, which is a brush. So make the brush a bit big. Give that brush a nice edge. And we are going to make sure white is selected because we want to reveal. And this is what's going to happen. I'm on 100% flow and 100% uh, capacity. That doesn't look too good at the moment. This is another part that I'm going to say to you, look, it looks fake. Of course it does. Because you've seen me do it. Let's get rid of that. I'm not worried about the rest of it. It doesn't look too bad. I'm just going to get this white pillow. Now. Yeah. Okay. Now that looks stupid. Look, if I turn it off and turn it on, it looks fake. Of course it does because you've just seen me do it. However, go away, come back and look at this image, tell me that that doesn't look brilliant. Let me just pull that down ever so slightly. Pull it down there, only ever so slightly because I've got it down a bit closer to the viewport here. Okay, so if we go over an area like this, Take it back, change the colour to black. There. Okay. I'm actually really happy with that, and I know the hotel's going to be happy with that. I would normally do these here, uh, but I'm not going to at the moment because it's quite a bit of texture in there. I didn't notice that a bit more. And I would normally do the curtain. However, these curtains are, are very colourful, and uh, if I did anything with that, it would look seriously weird. Okay. I'm happy with that. I'm now going to save that. That's Command S, then Command W to close. Go back to Lightroom, and that should import it straight in there. So we've got two images. We've got that one and that one. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you've got any questions, please leave them down below. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all your help, and I'll see you in another video. Thanks.